Hey everyone, geophysicist Stefan Burns here. There has been a notable uptick in seismic activity for the San Francisco Bay Area in California over the past couple weeks, specifically from this seismic swarm there in San Ramon, which the residents have been feeling basically continuously now for about two weeks. So the strongest being a 3.8 right under residential areas. As you can see, a whole bunch of other magnitude threes, tons of magnitude twos, and more. So that is the strongest earthquake that we've had in the Bay Area for the past month. You will also notice this 3.5 there in Vallejo. We see that right here. So that is quite a large earthquake as well. And that is our clue that something larger could be unfolding because in between the two here in Brioni's Regional Park, we also are getting some earthquakes as well. The highest being a magnitude 2.9. So there is a clear trend here of earthquake activity cutting through the, the mountains and hills here. And this is the Franklin fault. So this is where it gets interesting because back in 2014, there was a magnitude six earthquake on the West Napa fault, which was a previously unidentified fault. And that was a big earthquake. The biggest earthquake that the Bay Area has had in quite some time caused a billion dollars worth of damage in Napa and the surrounding areas. Well, that fault had a big rupture. It had some after slip that was quite notable in the days after that initial event. And that whole fault has released a lot of energy. Well, this Franklin fault basically connects right into the West Napa fault. And then where this swarm is occurring here in San Ramon, that is the northernmost part of the Calaveras fault. So you have the Calaveras fault, which is quite large, running down here, goes through Alum Rock. That area specifically often has magnitude five or greater earthquakes. Those are quite frequent. And uh, it can also have larger magnitude six and greater earthquakes. That's an area of active geothermal energy release. There's 20 plus springs there, sulfur, warm liquids bubbling up and such. And then to the north, you have the geysers, the geothermal field there. So you have these geothermal areas on both sides of the Bay Area, this one being significantly larger, but this one also being active at Alum Rock. And then right in between is where you get this clustering of faults zigzagging through the Bay Area where the earthquake probability is quite high because a lot of them have not ruptured in a long time, specifically also a big one. So we've had a rupture up here we often are getting larger earthquakes down here and then specifically there we haven't had anything but now we're seeing a seismic swarm at the northernmost part and we're also seeing seismic activity in between suggesting that perhaps this is an initial foreshock sequence and energy release before a bigger event because a magnitude 3.8, a magnitude 3.5 that's not dissipating really any energy if there is to be a magnitude 5.5 or magnitude 6 in the days or weeks or months ahead because you go up one order of magnitude for an earthquake that's 32 times more seismic energy. So it's really a drop in the bucket if you go up one or two orders of magnitude. So this is showing some activity on this fault. Now this is not a guarantee that we're going to have a higher magnitude earthquake in this section or surrounding it because uh, this could simply just be normal kind of regional earthquake dynamics. We often get these sort of earthquakes in the Bay Area. If this is the past month, you see that there are a lot of earthquakes here, but you have to punch in to see that swarm and that really stands out. Um, so let us look now at our earthquake probability for the Bay Area and also the fault rupture for that 2014 earthquake because that gives us a clue as to why this is a higher risk zone as of this moment. Here we have two different maps. This is for the 2014 South Napa earthquake showing the intensity contours. And here we see our earthquake probability map for the San Francisco Bay Area as provided by the USGS showing us the earthquake probability along these different faults for a magnitude 6.7 or greater earthquake. This is relevant as of their research going from 2014 to 2043. And let's start here. I'm showing you this map for the 2014 earthquake because again, we discussed how that West Napa fault connects into the Franklin fault, which then connects to the Calaveras fault. And we see how that intensity 
of the earthquake shaking cuts right down through here where we had that 3.5 earthquake in Vallejo just recently, showing that connection to the Franklin Fault right there. So they show the, the West Napa Fault off a little bit further to the east of the Franklin Fault, but all these effectively connect together as you can see. And so we see how that connected down into the Franklin Fault, and then here, we see the Calaveras Fault, and the San Ramon earthquake swarm right now is occurring right at the northernmost part of the Calaveras Fault. So we have this big release of seismic energy in 2014 from up here. Now these parts of the fault system running through the Bay Area haven't had an equivalent release of seismic energy, but they've been accommodating and building up that stress because you have the Pacific Plate moving up and the North American Plate moving down like this. So they're certainly building up stress just like the Napa Fault is, but they haven't released it. And you get big earthquakes along the Calaveras Fault, and we saw that big magnitude 6 here, showing that there is a potential for a big earthquake in this section, or even you could expand it out further. Because if you have, let's say, a big earthquake right there in San Ramon, that's where we're having the foreshock activity, it could rupture the entire length and you need a longer fault rupture to have bigger earthquakes. That's typically how it works. So for example, back with the, the San Francisco earthquake, you had that rupture uh, right around here, but you actually had the fault move and rupture and that slip occur going all the way up to like Eureka. It was a huge event, but the epicenter was right off the coast of San Francisco. So this is certainly an increased risk for the Bay Area as of right now, there being a magnitude, I would say five or greater earthquake for this section of the Bay Area in the days, weeks, and for a few months ahead. We'll have to wait to see how this San Ramon earthquake swarm continues and whether it quiets down. If it does, that's a good sign. But as of right now, if it continues to rumble with these low magnitude earthquakes, that makes it more and more likely that it, this is some sort of foreshock sequence because that is what we see often with earthquake activity around the globe, is that you get these foreshock earthquake swarms and then you get a bigger event. It's not guaranteed, it could just be a swarm and that's it, but it's certainly a higher risk at this moment in time now as it relates to a high magnitude earthquake because these dynamics are unfolding. So I've been your host, Stefan Burns. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll keep you up to date with what is happening in California, my hometown, Napa, the whole area. I've lived all throughout the Bay Area in my life. I love it there. And so I am always looking at this zone very closely as it relates to seismic activity. Thank you all so much. Wishing each and every single one of you well, and I'll see you all in the next video.